Most people in life are looking for how do I make a life worth living and a retirement worth having. In these moments of time, we have to look at the beautifulness of the sunshine, we have to breathe in the fresh air, and we have to really thank the Maker that we don't have COVID or anything like it. The truth is, the entire lifetime of humanity has faced illnesses, has faced pandemics, has faced plagues, has faced a lot of things that God has thrown at us to remind us of the value of human life. The value of human life is not within you. The value of human life is around you. The value of human life is in the noises that are made by the men and women who work near you, by you, beside you, and in your neighborhood. But the truth is that the value of human life belongs in the individual. The individual's soul is what people are attracted to. It's what makes them fall in love with you. It makes them feel you all the time. It makes them know you and want them want you to be thine or theirs but the truth is how you play with them how you stay with them how you live with them how you serve them how you feel with them how they make you feel or how you choose to feel around them is quite real the life of a person belongs to that individual but who they choose to play with how they choose to live their life where they choose to go how they choose to travel when they choose choose to go and what they choose to purchase is their right there are people in this world who want to take the rights away from anyone they don't like. And you sit there and you look at them and go, where the hell do you think you're going with this? What are you planning to win with this? How on earth are you going to win over a total stranger when you don't know them at all? You don't know their history. You don't know anything about their life philosophy. And you don't know their goals at all today. But you think you have rights to say what they can and can't do today in today's world of technology, of medical practices, of things that are at their access, not just yours. You see, when you start to overstep your bounds into other people's realms, you really put yourself at incredible liability, at credible legality, and at credible lethality. People will fight for their lives, but they're not going to walk into someone's house and shoot them to take over their lives unless they're a murderous kind. And those people don't belong in America. America is no longer that melting pot. America isn't even a smorgasbord anymore where people pick and choose. We have facets of community that are being overtaken, overrun by illegal aliens who don't belong here, who shouldn't be staying here, and frankly, whose colleges, whose universities failed to remove them from here. You see, there is a World Trade Organization, which I believe international studentship is under, and that there is a point where we need to decide, do we need a million foreign people here? The answer is no. In a time of COVID, they need to go home from here. They need to go back to their families. They need to be there to serve their moms, their dads, their grandparents, their lineage. They need to be in their own countries, raising up their own people, improving their own societies, qualifying their own uh, cultures, and streamlining what is and isn't working there. It is not our responsible to monitor the world, and thankfully, Do the President Joe Biden understands this. That there is a point in which we have to say no to people. And when we say no to people, we have to say no with some posterity. We also have to say no with some prosperity. That when we're serving people from foreign lands here, we're not serving our own American heritage. We're not serving our own American culture. We're not even serving our own American children. Our own American children are lazy and don't want to do jobs here. How foolish is that? Everyone begins their work and their world in some sort of retail establishment. Eventually, some of their experiences in customer service and serving other people starts to rub off on them so that they learn how to serve within an actual business organization, within an actual corporation, with an actual way to keep employment and keep themselves stable in a financial realm. Dr. John Maxwell, of course, always talks about the three stages of financial development, which is survival, security, and significance. And if you're not in a place of significance, then you haven't chosen how to get through survival and into security. And maybe you feel like you're in security, but you're still living paycheck to paycheck, and that's okay because that is life today in America. We have so many foreigners here violating our rights to serve our own families and improve our own situations and taking away our food here. It's not funny. While it is true that the gross national product of America is predominantly food and good quality food, a lot of fruits, a lot of vegetables, I believe, and even some of our meats go abroad. But the truth is our food has to help our society sustain itself, has to have our people in control of it, and we have to have control of our grains, 
our wheat and our fisheries and our farms and our domesticated animals. The more that we employ foreigners here without checking their references, without checking their lineage, without checking whether or not they're fully allowed to be here, we put ourselves at risk. Because at some point they're going to learn everything you know how to do as a master and they may just take over your restaurant. They may just put you at risk. The other day I received fugu from a restaurant and they never offered it to me in terms of would you like this. They just gave it to me and I believe they cut the wrong portion because I was out like a light for quite some time. You see, there's certain certifications you need in order to proceed with certain types of food and you need to know how to handle that. But we don't need people coming to our country trying to take over our land, take over our farms, killing off the people who really owned that crop, that grain, those cattle. We have to be careful of that. We have to be cautious of that. We, we have to do things like that. And openly, it's loving and kind when someone wants to feed me, but I'd rather they ask me in time. What we're talking about today is America. And what we're talking about today in America is how to help people. You help people by growing with them, you help people by talking with them, you help people by interacting with them, and you help people by not lying about them. Don't lie to yourself about your rights about people. Your only rights in this world of America or any other part of the world based on the treaties and the organizations that produce what is the right kind of life for the human being tell you quite frankly, quite in truth, that your rights begin and end only with you. You don't have family members with special needs, I guarantee it. You have people that you just don't like the way they live their lives, but you know what? Tough shit. Get on your own life. Get off your own bandwagon and go do your life. Go find your wife. Go support your children. Do things that they need to grow their life, not your version of it. People in life have rights today, and when you take away someone's human rights, when you make them an independent individual without your consent, you recognize human rights today. When you presume that they have some sort of illness because they just don't want to play your game, you're full of shit. What they've said is, this is my life and I will choose how I spend my day. If I choose to stay, sit out in the sunshine all day and just bask in the sunlight, I'm going to do that. If I choose to go into a company and sell my ass off, I'm going to do that. If I choose to walk and talk to people in restaurants about cleanliness of hygiene and whatnot during a time of COVID, I'm going to do that. But I'm never going to walk into your house and look into your drawers and peek into your underwear and all this sort of shit that people are doing today thinking they have rights to do this. Social media has helped to collapse the world structures of technology, telephones, and whatnot. But at the same time, it has allowed voyeurism that is immoral and illegal. And I am appalled by what I hear Christian pastors talking about. They're talking about people's sexuality, which is inappropriate. A person's sexuality, a person's intimacy with another partner is between them and the Lord. It has nothing to do with any other person. No family member, no extended family member, no society member, no friend, no nothing. When people are alone in their homes, they have the right to be alone, not voyeured on through green screen technologies or whatever you call it where they can actually scan the building and look at you in green time. I believe it's what it's called in the military. But I've been a little bit old and I'm a little bit tired and having to remember all the new terminology from my work. But let me tell you, we have rights here, and our rights belong with us individually. They belong to our personhood, our physical being, our heart belongs to us. We choose who we love. Our mind belongs to us. We choose what we prove, provide to ourselves to learn. Our souls belong to us. We have the right under every treaty of the world to study and establish what religion, what spirituality, what faith we choose to practice as long as it doesn't harm a person or an animal of any sort. And the people who dance around with snakes are pissing God off. So let's just put them back where they belong because they are here to test us. Not at all. They're here to teach us about mortality rates. That's all. In life, we have moments of time to speak the truth. And our personhood belongs to our full physical being. And no stranger has a right to commandeer someone's body and literally approach them or interact with them or, or harass them or shave them or do abusive things to them in a way to teach them a fucking lesson of their version of the Lord. And I will be outraged to hear that women of this world, women who claim to be Christians, are helping to rape men like me and others because they just thought they had rights to see a naked body that is not theirs at all. In life, we have most of time to speak the truth about the law, and we do not allow that here. We do not allow pedophilia. We do not allow anything like that here. We do not allow incest. We do not allow molestation. We do not allow mutilation. We do not allow treason. We do not allow torture. And yet people coming in foreign lands, 
coming in from foreign lands do that here because they don't regard the laws of the world, they don't regard the laws of God, and they don't regard our laws at all. When it comes to our paperwork, we have life-to-death records. Our birth certificate belongs to the individual, not some fucking police officer who wants to make a point in his own life that I'm in control, I'm in power, I will screw your life because I'm so jealous, I'm so stupid about my own life. You don't want to be a law enforcement officer? Get the fuck out of it. You're making $10 an hour. You can go off and make something more if you learned how to grow your brain and whatnot. But I can be pissed off because most of them have harmed my life. They have lied, they've stealed, they've cheated me out of my life. And I will personally continue to my work towards the defunding of the police. We have a National Guard, we have an Army, we have an Air Force, we have a Marines, we have a Navy, and we don't need any other, lawyer, any other legal entities in the land. It's pretty much true. We have plenty of people who are out of work from those those militaries who need jobs and will do a better job as long as they remember the rules of the world. Those belong in the treaties that govern our nation in regard to other people and other nations. And when they forget, we get the shit on the police in the news. And I will continue to speak my truth. This is my truth. Your truth might be you love officers because you've had plenty in your family. What, were they lawful? Did they steal? Did they lie? Did they cheat to get a perpetrator? Or did they do everything by God's house and God's rules in the Ten Commandments? Let's be real. In life, we have moments of time to speak the truth. Where your boundaries begin and end are with you. With regard to our possessions, we have a lifetime of collecting things, buying things, receiving things as gift, and those things belong to us. They don't belong to any other person to commandeer, to steal, or do anything without our consent and our lawful appropriations of those property things. Those things we inherit sometimes, and those things we bequeath sometimes. And those things belong to our legal heir in case we die sometimes. But in life, we have moments of time to speak the truth. And the truth is that people play in and play out as if they're in power, they're in control. They want to walk up and play you with food that they've chosen for their life, and then they feel guilty and want to give it to you. And that's inappropriate. If they want to feed someone out of generous and kindness, you walk up, you plant them with $10 and say, have a meal on me. And then you know for a fact, you know from absolute fact that they're going to choose for themselves what they have the right and power to do for themselves, which is to decide how they're going to use that $10. Will they go provide it to a great place where you get a great meal for a great value? Or will they actually go someplace else? And will they actually decide, I'm going to take that $10 and I'm going to use it over three meals for my lifetime, or four meals for my lifetime, or ten meals for my lifetime? They have the right to choose. You have to give people the honor and the right to choose. If you think there should be a reason that you can't give them cash because you don't carry cash, that's somewhat foolish because even when you buy gift cards, you're at risk. You really should buy those gift cards with cash because the gift card bought with cash cannot be recharged off your charge card, your bank card, or by any employee trying to steal from that gift card. And I've seen it happen, that employees will get a gift card and then they'll ring something after it for themselves after the client or the customer has left. And again, that is theft. It is inappropriate, and it is illegal, and it is immoral. But in life, we have to speak the truth, that if you don't trust someone with your cash, then don't bother. But there are people on the street that do need help. But there's different type of help that people need, and sometimes you have to just walk up and say, I'd really like to help you today. What can I do for you today on your goals to make sure that you get further along the way of your life? And I will do it with no obligations. I will do it with no expectations. I will do it with no regard for anything but your life.